going to dress as Sybil from Downton Abbey. I got asked to be part of a Pass the Brush Challenge, uh, Downton themed, and I was given Sybil, and so how could I not recreate her awesome harem pants outfit from, I think it was in the first season. This was actually from history. Um, Paul Poré, a famous designer, held a ball called the Thousand and Second Night Ball in 1911, I think. And the theme was Arabian Nights. So he created the jupe culotte around then, or the harem pants, harem skirt. And it comes obviously from traditional Middle Eastern dress, but of course heavily stylized and romanticized and Edwardianized. So while the pants resemble where it comes from, the top is still a Edwardian dress bodice. So it's constructed as a bodice could have been constructed. And I used, for the pattern, I used Patterns of Fashion, and I'll be sure to put a link for that. I had to make it very quickly. <laughs> I was asked to be part of the challenge and I had nothing to wear that was downtown. I have Edwardian stuff, but so I put this together in just a couple of days. And how I did that, the, the most time consuming part was putting the bodice together. It's um, made of cotton, it's boned, it's finished. The uh, ribbon straps here, and the ribbon was a time saver as well because I didn't have to finish anything. Um, all of this was a bodice that all this nice fabric was laid upon. time saver these sleeves the chiffon so chiffon but they were a scarf I had on hand so that scarf got sacrificed because it was already hemmed so I just utilized the hems draped it on the biggest time saver though was definitely this embroidered beading get closer so this was my biggest hack it started life as a Forever 21 mini skirt from about 10 years ago. And it almost got donated many times because it's just not something I would wear, but the beading was lovely and the embroidery was beautiful and surprisingly well done for what was probably a $20 skirt. Uh, turns out it was also hand beaded when I went to take the skirt apart it's all hand beaded and not tambour beaded either. It's individual beading. So I lucked out there, <laughs> but um, time savers as well. I did not take it apart and cut pieces. I just laid it and draped it upon the foundation bodice that I knew fit me and I added darts here, but this was the hem of the skirt. This was also the hem of the skirt. Um, and I just butted the hem together and whipped it and I lined the back because of the beading and just added ribbon. Um, those were huge, huge time savers, which enabled me to create something in only a couple of days, which probably harkens back to similar, similarly what would have been done in the period I didn't take a lot of time couture fussing and tiny stitches. I just got it done. And it looks, I like it. Uh, let's see what else. Um, this I had on hand. I only used things I had on hand. I didn't buy anything for this because I've been trying not to shop uh, while this pandemic's going on. I had some tassels on hand. And I didn't, I didn't take Sybil's costume and try to replicate it exactly because there was no way, I had no access to materials, and in a couple of days I couldn't have ordered anything anyway. So I used only things I had on hand. Uh, I had this cotton silk blend fabric on hand. 
And the pants are cool. The pants are actually a 1940 pattern that I used recently. And I said, hey, giant pants, this will work. And these are actually selvage to selvage, each pant leg, so they're, they're huge. Um, I did add, however, length in the, in the crotch and I added length in the waist because a slightly raised waistline is a hallmark of that part of the Edwardian years. The sash was inspired by, ooh, I don't remember which dress exactly, but because I couldn't replicate Sybil's outfit exactly, I took inspiration from other um, harem pant style outfits of the period and, and just dresses in general. So the sleeves are, you see that kind of sleeve a lot on Edwardian gowns. Um, it has a placket that goes up and down the back, uh, elastic in the ankles. And actually this is, this is my biggest <laughs> hack of the dress. Um, halfway through creating it, I went, oh no, how am I gonna go to the bathroom in this? because dresses from the period, you just lift them. Um, you don't wanna have to undo 30 hooks and eyes every time you wanna use restroom. So, because the pants are so big, I put a longer strap of elastic in this that can just be drawn up, hey Henry, drawn up and knotted. So I can undo this whole pant leg and bring it up just like a skirt. Problem solved. <laughs> and um, I wouldn't normally wanna share that with the world. <laughs> But I believe clothing should be functional, and that's something you have to think about. How are you gonna get in and out of something? Um, just like how are you gonna breathe or eat or raise your arms? So all of that is, I think, part of successful costuming and dressmaking. Let's see. I paired it with some cute remix shoes that kind of have that look of the period. Uh, my hair I did in a style, in a Sybil-ish style, uh, and I will definitely be including a tutorial for that. I don't even know if I should call them tutorials, it's just me getting dressed and sharing it. But I'm actually, I'm actually really enjoying doing videoed blog posts, as it were. Um, vlog, I guess. Uh, I used to really like blogging and I learned a lot from other bloggers and I enjoy Instagram, but I just don't think it's a, a good platform for sharing um, information and how to do something. It's very good for, oh, what an awesome picture. I'm interested in this. Let me go research it elsewhere. So I think YouTube is my, my new fun thing. I'm really enjoying it. And I hope you all are enjoying seeing what I've got going on and I will start doing more costume uh, blog posts for lack of a better word and uh, I ordered a microphone so hopefully coming up um, sound will be better anyway um, any questions throw them in the comments I will try my best to get to them and as always you can find me at dressed in time on Instagram dressed underscore in underscore time and um, at ye old blog uh, www dressedintime.blogspot.com. Anyways, I think I'm off to go watch some Downton Abbey in my outfit. Maybe not. Probably put on sweats. Anyways, have a good one.